if you ever liked the idea of playing as a cursed lord, you know, kind of like Morgoth, putting everybody's foolish ambitions to rest, well, I have the build for you. Because in today's video, we're going to take a look at a really awesome one that's very suitable for the end game and makes use of some recently buffed items and spells. So let's begin. Now, this build, as the name implies, makes use primarily of Morgoth's Cursed Sword, specifically because in update 1.04, it got a nice buff on the unique scale, so now it's much faster to use. It's also amazing because it covers a pretty large area when you unleash the sweep attack with it, meaning that enemies that otherwise attack you from the sides, sometimes even from the back, will get interrupted by the damage explosions. It's not just good for that, it's also amazing at interrupting enemies and eventually even stunning them essentially you do the charge following by the sweep and finally you can unleash a second attack usually resulting in enemy stunned or well requiring one more hit before that happens outside of that i'm also incorporating a couple of incantations with this build though do keep in mind that it's not going to have high faith in this case so we're making use of the blood flame talon and the blood boon both of which got a nice buff in 1.04 specifically following stuns i kind of like unleashing a number of blood flame talons simply because it's much faster to cast than using the sword and it also seems to stack bleed much faster in case that's what you're looking for and then blood boon is really nice against large hit box enemies placing a number of fires on the ground which also further increases that blood build up and creates even more damage in terms of weapons here they are of course margot's sword is the main one and the second one is going to be the dragon communion seal yes it's been nerfed in the recent patches but with a high arcane build like this it still gives the best incantation scaling to ensure that our incantations deal as much damage as possible with this so 262 at about 40 arcane this is going to be one of the primary stats the other one being of course dexterity this is the main one you will want since you get a b scaling with the margot sword and on top of that this is also the stat that scales the damage further on that weapon skill talisman wise obviously since this primarily uses that weapon art we want to buff that as much as possible and here is where the shard of alexander comes into play pretty much the best in slot for any build that relies on weapon skills in general but because the skill on Margot's Cursed Sword also has a fire component to it, it totally benefits from also adding a fire scorpion charm. Kinda behaves a little bit like the Blood Flame Blade, so it still qualifies as a flame kind of attack, even though the weapon itself doesn't feature any fire damage to speak of. So it gets another like 12% damage boost right there, at least that's the case from my testing. Following that, I also added a sword seal as usual. In this case, my level is only 134. I kind of wanted vigor, strength, dexterity. So in this case, I needed to equip the sword, which is why this kind of saved me those 15 points. And finally, a filigreed crest. This is going to reduce that mana consumption by 10 for the two combo with the weapon skill on the sword. You can totally replace that with a Lord of Blood Exaltation if you want more damage and I even had runs when I was using a seppuku in an offhand weapon so that I can pre-buff my damage before entering combat. It's totally a viable option or you can just rely on the blood loss that happens naturally during combat when using Margot's Cursed Sword. Now, the only other thing that I will cover before moving on to the strategy is in terms of the pre-buffs that you apply before combat. Obviously, since we have just 15 points into faith in this case, this leaves room for adding a Flame Grammy Strength in the mix, which will definitely benefit Margot's Swords, both in terms of direct physical damage and also the subsequent Wildfire Explosion. The reason I'm talking about this is because if you're trying to also incorporate a Blood Boil Aromatic, it's going to override the Flame Granary Strength. So if you're going with this, either choose one or the other. Obviously, the Blood Boil Aromatic will last for much longer, but you constantly need to farm it and obviously also craft it. That's why I kind of prefer the Flame Granary Strength since you can just cast it and forget about it. Though do keep in mind that it will last much less than the Aromatic. And on top of that, if you're also implementing a Physic tier, I like the one that buffs my Dexterity by 10 points and also gives me extra fire damage since it benefits the weapon skill on the Cursed Sword. 
Now, in terms of strategies, here is how it goes. The Margot Cursed Sword actually is amazing at stunning enemies. So, usually what I do is just unleash my L2s. This is going to charge your character into the target, which is also going to interrupt most of its attacks. Followed by the sweep, which is also an interrupt. The explosions, which again interrupt. And pretty much most of the things you do with it will interrupt and eventually stun the target in about like 4 hits. If you somehow get surrounded by enemies, then it's even better because you can just unleash a sweep, which pretty much covers almost half of a circle. And then you can always readjust your character and create the second one to fully encircle yourself in that damage, resulting in pretty much anything getting, well, blasted and interrupted in the process. Against bosses, not much to speak of. Of course, you do have to keep your distance when you're in trouble, and of course, also your attacks can be interrupted by enemy attacks. There's very few things that can actually bypass that compared to being attacked by normal enemies. So what I suggest is to look for openings or just wait for the enemy to land a powerful attack. Usually this is going to give you enough time to follow up with an entire combo and this is usually going to stun them. And even if it doesn't stun them, you will just do a second combo when there's the next opening and this is definitely going to do that. You can then follow up with whatever you want. You can obviously do a critical strike, but it's much more beneficial to just unleash either the sword or one of your other incantations since that's going to create the blood loss as well. Now, in terms of ranged enemies or enemies that are just annoying from the distance, this is why I also kept the blood boon, especially for the larger enemies, but you can always go with a swarm of flies. Yes, it's been nerfed in the recent patches, but it's still decent at creating blood loss at the same time. Or better yet, just implement a Dragon Communion incantation in the mix. It's going to benefit from the Dragon Communion seal, so then you can deal a lot more damage. You can pretty much have anything you want to. A Rotten Breath could still work if you're early in the game and kind of want to rely on that a little bit more. Or maybe a Dragon Ice or Borealis Mist for implementing a little bit more Frostbite into your build. Totally worth it, and this is still a high, kind of like arcane and dexterity build, so you can always switch to other Blawless weapons, like for example a curved sword with some seppukus on, but that would kind of defeat the purpose of this build. The only other thing left mentioning, I guess, is the fact that if you're trying to also do a bit of PvP right now, since PvE became a bit stale, since it's been so long since the game released, you can always use Margot's sword. It definitely takes a lot of people by surprise. And even more so, that damage on it is definitely not worthy. Probably even better in PvP and the way you kind of like set them up for combos and interrupt them or just get them to stay in place at the same time. This is it with the build. Totally let me know down below. Are you making use of this sword? Do you like it or do you have anything else planned? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.